Super Rugby Aotearoa round number five. Wins for the Hurricanes and the Chiefs. Disappointment for the Highlanders. They had a lot of errors in their game. The Blues not opting for three and looking a wee bit tired in their game. Uh, we'll go over the games quickly and uh, some stats and some thoughts. And you guys can let me know how you thought the two games went. Uh, but obviously, as a Blues fan, I am pretty disappointed with two losses in a row. The first one... It's the Geordie Barrett show. He scores 30 points, three tries, three conversions, three penalties. Uh, the Highlanders will be pretty gutted with their performance, especially in terms of their errors, man. Um, Dane Coles being back was great news for the Hurricanes, though. He certainly adds a bit of extra punch to their lineup. Uh, he was a part of setting up the first try to Geordie Barrett. Frizzell almost had one in return, but he dropped the ball over the line, according to the TMO. Gut feel for that one was definitely no try, and that's literally what I think the ref, uh, the ref said. I didn't know they were allowed to go. Uh, oh no, yeah. Did he say gut feel no try or try? I don't know they were allowed to go on gut feels. I thought they had to go with what they'd seen. But anyway, um, it looked like maybe he had a fingertip to it, but no, he, he dropped it, and um, eventually the Hurricanes got a let off because the Highlanders conceded an obstruction penalty, and it's like, man, Highlanders, that's let off number one. Uh, they kept the pressure on. Eventually, Lomax gets yellow carded for uh, a more penalty, but then Coles wins a breakdown penalty to get the, the Hurricanes out of trouble again. And um, the the new Highlanders winger, what's his name? Vaakolo? Like he goes really close, close enough that he probably could have reached out for a try, but instead he takes the safe option because I guess it's a gamble. If he doesn't get the try, he's probably going to get turned over. He tries to play it back, but they end up conceding a penalty. Anyways, come on, man, just reach out. So it's maybe another missed chance with the Hurricanes under pressure again. However, it didn't actually matter because the Hurricanes had a penalty reversed for like Walker Lea Wera rubbing a guy in the head and, and giving him a push. The commentary team in New Zealand was like irate that that was a penalty. They're like, there's no way you should be reversing that. Brendan Pickerel can be a bit of a stickler. Um, I hate the head rubbing and pushing and stuff anyway. I know it's it's a bunch of dudes playing a pretty athletic sport, so you're going to get a bit of that, but I, I just think there's no need for it. I think, um, I don't remember Richie McCaw ever like rubbing guys on the head after, you know, after he had won a breakdown penalty or, or pushing them, like maybe in defense of his own guys. But yes, I, I think that kind of stuff is nonsense. But anyway, it ended up being costly because it ended the Brent Evans try. All from that reverse penalty. So, yeah, pretty costly. Um, the Highlanders, again, their own worst enemy from not exiting properly from a, a Hurricanes kick. And, like, Riasi gets a line break. Jordy Barrett goes on the inside and gets a try. 17-7 at half time. Highlanders have got more run meters, more position, more territory, but they're behind. Seriously, their own worst enemies. Second half, Jordy gets his hat trick early on. Uh, again, it's the Highlanders, like Mitch Hunt knocks the ball on from the kickoff, I think it was. It's like madness. Um, yeah, scrum, Lamapi's line break, and Jordy Barrett hit the ball at pace, so 24 points to, to 7 at that point. And then a long penalty from Jordy made it 27-7, so starting to look pretty comfortable at that point. Jimeno come on, came on for the Highlanders, he had a bit of impact, won a breakdown penalty early, tried to shift the momentum, but... Um, it was never going to be enough because, uh, yeah, Geordie's boot's just too big. Pete Umanga, sorry, Thomas Umanga just had to get a try. Uh, so did Garden Bashup, but yeah, 30 points to 19. It's not going to be, it's not going to be enough. Possession finishes 67-33 and territory 70-30 to the Highlanders. But it doesn't matter if you're going to make that many mistakes, man. Run meters 459 to 176. Kicks from hand, the Hurricanes kick more, but not that much more. 26 kicks to 23. Remember, they've only had 33% possession, so they're kicking less in terms of the amount of ball. So the Hurricanes are kicking a lot more compared to how much ball they've got. Um, tackling percentage is both 86%. The Hurricanes' defense has to make 159 tackles. The Highlanders just 74, so double. But it's uh, a... a a result built on a defense and um, some good attacking play. Highlanders mistakes. Um, Rousey gets 47 run meters. Karifi gets 19 out of 21 tackles. Frizzell beats six defenders, but yeah, it's not enough in a losing effort. Um, the Hurricanes really had a knack of winning turnovers under pressure in that game. Highlanders have got the Crusaders away next week, so it doesn't get any easier. 
the Hurricanes have got the Blues also away. The Highlanders are in fifth. The Hurricanes are in fourth, both with one win and three losses. The next game, Chiefs against Blues. Now, this game is going to go down probably as a cracker, proper entertaining game with the Chiefs winning it at the death. But honestly, the first half was pretty stink. The first half was a painful watch, man. Like, I know the commentary team was trying to big it up, but it was it was some pretty average stuff in that first half. Back and forth. Kane wins turnover. Peter Fett is good under the high ball. Um, D-Mac seems to be having butterfingers in that first half. He doesn't seem to be able to keep a hold of the ball. Um, the Blues did get their first try through Akira Ioannia from a Chiefs line-out error. So Blues capitalizing on a mistake. Uh, D-Mac put in a really good tackle on Mark Talia, which was good. So, like, saved a potential try. It was close. The Blues are determined not to opt for any bloody penalties. They wanted to go for tries. They did go close. But at halftime, um, yeah, there's nothing much doing. Position 60-40 to the Blues. Territory 63-37. Knock-ons are 7-4. That's a lot of knock-ons for one half of rugby, man. Turnovers conceded is 9-9. That includes the knock-ons. So you got 18 turnovers conceded in 40 minutes. That's one pretty much every two minutes, man. That's horrendous. And remember, most of those are knock-ons. 11 knock-ons. Mm, not pretty, honestly. Clean breaks is 7-1, to one, though, with the Chiefs having more. So the Blues got all the ball, but the Chiefs are looking more dangerous. Chiefs are tackling at 93% if you're looking for a bright spot, whereas the Blues are at a pathetic 77. So way different. Uh, second half, Chiefs win breakdown penalty, kick a penalty to make it, um, I think it's 7-3 at that point. And uh, Dalton Papali'i wins turnovers. Um, ALB... Looks to have scored, but Pettafetta kind of knocked it out of his hands. The TMO had a good look at that one, but ruled that it was no try. Uh, the Chiefs get held up just barely. They really started to turn the screws. Uh, Oteri Black had a moment where he was looking to take a kick, and it bounced off his shoulder into touch. Maybe kind of hit him in the face as well. Not his best moment because he'd been sharp last year but hasn't quite met that same mark maybe early games this year but not in the last couple of weeks uh and then from that mistake the chiefs get a mall try through tokiaho uh clear grounding and uh, it's eight points to seven so a lead change remember blue scored a try off for chief's mistake well the the chiefs returned the favor from a blues mistake blues missed the penalty on 60 minutes i'll tell you black's kicking boots have gone a wee bit missing but then it didn't matter because tom robinson got his try um from a christie line break i think it was and then uh, he showed some proper wheels to go down the wing and score um but yeah i think that was like one of the better moves from the blues i guess in that game um rico had a big line break at one point Blues went like 16 phases, but knocked the... Was they knock it on or they forward pass it? Either way, they conceded position pretty cheaply. Uh, the Blues maybe had a mall try on 68, but it was chalked off for being offside. So not able to convert again. Uh, Chiefs go 17 phases on 72. Blues win a turnover. 74 minutes. Dalton uh, knocks the ball on. It looks like maybe a deliberate knock-on, but they say, nah, that's not like a yellow card offense. Maybe it's a bit of a get out of jail. But uh, eventually, D-Mac gets a try right on 79 minutes. And um, the Blues refer it for a captain's referral. The crowd boos like crazy. Uh, they check the final pass. It's flat. And I'll say that as a Blues fan. It's flat. It's all good. All good try. And uh, d Max, the one who goes over and he takes the full minute for the conversion to make sure there's going to be no restart. The ref even tells him, hey, if you want to take the whole minute, take the whole minute. It's all good. Anyway. Run meters 361 to 211. So the Blues attack was pretty flat, man. Possession and territory. The Blues still end up edging it. 53 for position, 51 for territory but they were under the pump in that that second half because that's evened up remember the blues were dominant in the first half so the chiefs were dominant in the second in that regard um the line outs both sides are pretty average around one and four was going astray uh turnovers conceded as 13 to 12 so it's a bit better in the second half but it's still not that pretty the chiefs still tackle at 90 percent which is enormous effort 
The Blues are at 81, so it's improved, but it's still not great. Honestly, the Blues at the end of that game looked knackered. The Blues had a little period towards like the last 10 minutes where they were down the Chiefs' end, but they were just like hands on their heads, hands on their hips. They did not look fit, whereas the Chiefs guys were up for it. Chiefs got the bye now, and the Blues will host the Hurricanes. So, yeah. Not happy, but congratulations to the Chiefs. Well-deserved victory. Blues have got a lot of work to do. And uh, likewise, the Highlanders are a bit disappointed with their errors, but a good effort from the Canes to go down and break their losing run. Anyway, it's looking at this point like the Crusaders are the top dog and that these four teams are all definitely behind, but we'll see how the competition pans out. You guys let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.